living on Coca-Cola and burger. Sleep under his desk. Walk under his desk so that he can't sleep. Stay in an uncomfortable place. Under your table. Like that. Be walking, thinking, coded. Few years later, he's dominated his world. Tap your neighbor, humble yourself. You see, remember what I said about it's possible to be humble in, another, in one area and be proud in another. So, there is a word of God about sleep. If you like, call the name of God and Jesus and speak in tongues. In this area, see this area? Nothing can change there until you change it. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Tony, but put in the work. Amen. What did God say this morning? He said, this morning I want you to work. Have you started working? Today is already 11. The 10th. Today is gone. Literally, the month will soon end. One third of the month already. What have you done? What have you done? We're on holiday. We're on holiday. The holiday is still. 13th. We're on holiday. By, the holiday. by that time, the month has gone midway. So let January just finish. I'll start in February. I'll, 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 I'll. In February, start. He said, like, oh no, there is Valentine on the fourteenth. So, you know, between now and then, I need to plan properly. So it's like, okay, let let it just finish. After Valentine, I'll start up quickly. What have you done with the plans you wrote? If you have any, when are you supposed to start it? Time is going. Time is what? Time is going. Time is going. I've seen people tell me, you know, I'll sing this song, I'll sing this song. I say, Papa, don't worry, it's song I'm coming. Say, Papa, I'm coming to the studio in, Feb in, in, in summer. I'm coming to the studio for the graduate, and I watch them go. <laughs> and I'll say it again. Somebody in Ajegule who is hustling and doing three works, conductor at 90s in studio, is working himself out consistently. He will soon be singing his song and dancing his moves and attending his shows and calling him celebrity because we don't understand the place of principle. Walk while it is still day. Amen. Amen. Now, now, now is when many of you can take some risks. You are still very young. Now that you are still single, and there's nobody in your life yet, is when you can take some serious risks. And decide to engage on something and pursue something for your life. As one's children and once husband and children enter, it's a different ball game. When you want to go here, the head will pull you this way. When you want to go here, the head will pull you this way. Because you have become one. If you want to go like this, the children will call you. Just when you are planning to do something big, you go and do scan. You are not pregnant. Look at this scan. Look at yourself. Look at this scan. Look at yourself. You don't know whether to say, thank you, Jesus. Or like, why did you come now? <laughs> Say, God cannot make mistakes. In all situations, let us thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. We have to make a sacrifice now. Now is the time to pursue things. 
Listen to me. Because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse and has rent your clothes and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Because you humbled yourself, I have heard you. Remember when he says, you know, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves under the mighty hands of God that he will lift you up in due season. So God is lifting him up amongst his generation. Behold, therefore, I will gather you, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace. And thine eyes shall not see all this evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Amen. You see how he escaped? Tap your neighbor's say escape. Say escape. Humble yourself and escape. Don't join the crowd. What was trending was the evils which everyone was doing. But a certain man rent his clothes and said, God forbid, I cannot join them. I cannot join them. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Okay. First Kings 21 from verse 20. Because of time. First Kings 21 from verse 20. Let's look at another example. Amen. Ahab is a very popular one in the whole of the scriptures. King Ahab. Ahab said to Elijah, how many know Ahab? Amen. The husband of Jezebel. Amen. Very renowned evildoer. Amen. <laughs> Professional evildoer. And he have said to Elijah, Has thou found me, O oh my enemy? Amen. <laughs> when you know your enemy. So Prophet Elijah shows up and he looks at him and he says, My enemy, my enemy. <laughs> I've been looking for you, so you are the one that found me first. All right, hit me with it. This one you found me. I guess I can't run away. So what do you have to say? Because you have sold thyself to walk evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee. Elijah is speaking by the, by the Spirit. And will take away your posterity. And will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall. I'm talking about when God is the one resisting somebody. This is not the devil now. I know people don't like to look at this part of scripture and yet it's there. I'm not one of those people who ignores it. God says, anything that is called man, that pieces, that urinates against the wall, he says, I'm taking all of them away. And him that is shut up and left in Israel, next, and we make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Haijah, for the provo provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. By ignoring the word of God. Next. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord saying, the dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. It's pinpoint personal prophecy. Hello? Looking at your reaction of some of you now, you know, it seems as if I'm preaching bad news. I'm sorry that you don't read your Bible or maybe it's sounding different from my mouth. But these things are in the world. It is this kind of things that the king we just read saw and made him tear his garment. This is why it's good to study the world. So you understand the depth of what you are doing. And where to go and where not to go and what to do and what not to do. And maintain your line. Just because you don't know the world does not mean you are exempt from the consequences. There are 9, 10 year, 11 year olds who are getting pregnant and who are impregnating other people. And if you ask them what happened, they say they don't even know. <laughs> so I don't know. So, but you're the father of the baby. So, well, can I be the father of the baby? I can't even take care of myself. Yeah, you're the father of the baby. Because ignorance was not supposed to exempt you from the principle. Amen. If spermatozoa sees an ovum, 
They must be fertilized. Are you listening to my English? The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. 24. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. And him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. Next. But there was none like unto Ahab, <laughs> which did sell himself to walk wickedness in the sight of the Lord. Are you seeing it? In the, among the greats of evil men, he was in the hall of fame. <laughs> these, these are those types called evil genius. Such that later on in history, when the Bible is making reference to people who did evil, the Bible will say, you know, this one worked like his father, Ahab. And Ahab was not his father. <laughs> The, the, the same way, so, so, like we have Abraham, the father of faith, there, are, there is Ahab, the father of wickedness. Whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Next. And he did very abominably in, the, in following idols, according to all the things as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. 20, 20, next. And it came to pass when Ahab heard these words. Tell about when he heard the words. Yes. It's what you do when you hear the words that matter. What you do when you hear the word. Every one of us, including myself, have done wrong before. When you hear the voice, harden not your heart. When God begins to talk to you and tell you, boy, this, 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 what you're doing now makes no sense. You've got to stop it. You're going the wrong way. You've got to, you just got to, you just got to like, Lord, I'm, I'm stopping this. I've done wrong. I wasn't born, into, born, born, you know, I wasn't born a pastor. When he heard it that he rent his clothes, my God, what do you do when you hear the word of God? Amen. And I mean not just a bad word, but even a good word. What do you do when you hear the word of God? I said it the other day. When God tells you, for example, he says he wants to make you a millionaire, what do you do? You go, sit down, cross your leg. Waiting for a miracle. Singing. I want to be a millionaire. <laughs> Put it on replay. Amen. Amen. I don't get money with you, I <laughs> Like sing all the songs that has to do with money. What money cannot do? Too much money can do. Sing it. Sing it. And the angel of prosperity will be looking at you. Because he doesn't respond to that. He responds to words. To the word of God and to principles. There's no way someone who is putting more effort. Is putting in time, effort, praying, studying, fasting, reading books. Work, sleeping, not sleeping a whole lot. Just working himself, doing two, three jobs, pushing himself. There's no way God's going to ignore that person and give it to you. He rent his clothes when he heard the words and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted. Ahab. I know you thought we were talking about Moses or Abraham. I'm talking of who? Ahab, Ahab enter spirit. You know how you can be so evil and wicked one minute and the next minute you're just like, what's this life? So listen to me. Don't let your mistakes be an excuse. That excuse you are giving is also the pride. So I've done too much. You know, now I've gone far. There's no, I can't stop it again. I can't stop it. You are talking nonsense. You can die in that spot. Call yourself to order. Why you listen to me? Call yourself to order. All men have made mistakes. 
Call yourself to order. Look at two people on the cross, one to the left, one to the right. And one says, you know, like, if you are really a man of God, a prophet, or the Savior of the world, save us. The other one, like, will you shut up, bro? What are you talking about? Don't even say a word. We are guilty of what we are suffering for, we really did. But this man is innocent. Jesus looked at him as a consular, as the ambassador. So here's your passport. Here's your passport. Take visa. Yeah. Amen. In fact, yeah. take permanent residency. Yeah. If I take citizenship. Yeah. God, Jesus bent the rules for him in one day. He said, tonight. Not next week, not next year. Some of you, there are some of you who are waiting for an end of year miracle when God is doing a tonight miracle. Talking, he's looking for somebody who can humble himself. Say, God changed my life. God changed my life. And the Lord is like, Tonight you shall be with me in paradise. Tonight, tell me about tonight. tonight. When should a person change? a boyfriend, you have a girlfriend who keeps making you break the word of God. Who makes you push the word of God aside and ask your parents out. And tell God, ask God out of your life. And you hear the word of God. You rent your cloth. Those days they used to rent cloth. Now we talk of the renting of the heart, circumcised heart. I say never again. You don't need a relation to end a wrong relationship. Someone wrote me from Africa. Maybe she will listen to this message and give me details of things happening. And ask me what she should do about the relationship. Don't need revelation. Don't need revelation. This relationship is a wrong one. End it. I hope she has listened to the word of God. That's what I'm talking about now. Humility. Now, when such a one is doing it, you will think he's the one who is not humble. The humble one is the person who does God's word. <coughs> he rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his flesh and fasted and lay his sackcloth and went softly. He said no word anymore. He look at the prophet, your enemy, and just keep quiet. Said no word. Next verse. Aya. Tell me it doesn't take long. And that's why it is possible one minute it to seem as if I was preaching, or the way I was preaching, I'm preaching evil or bad news. And the next second, I'm preaching grace. It doesn't take long. So the prophet, one minute, is telling this guy what is it going through. And the next moment, he hears a voice. Because God is judging by the heart. Immediately, the man, he's still there. Immediately, the man humbled himself. See what God says. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah, the teach by it, saying, next. Can you see how Ahab humbles himself before me? Tap your neighbor and say, God is too good. All he's asking for is humility. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he himself will lift you up in due time. God looks at Ahab. Ah, is this Ahab? 
Is it not Ahab? Ahab, is, is it you? <laughs> that moment when God himself shouts, Chineke, me. Amen. <laughs> like, what is happening here? God is asking the prophet, can you see how Ahab humbles himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days. Tell him he's a good God. Listen to me. Listen to me. The thing God has asked us for, our key scripture for the year, is to humble yourself in his hands. Under his hands. And watch him do something he has never done in your life before. What you have done before, the mistakes and the errors, is not important. But he's saying, right now as you are hearing the word, humble yourself. He says, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. Next verse. Is that all? My God. Yeah. And that's how he have escaped. Tap your neighbor, say escape. <laughs> say escape. <laughs> say humble yourself. And escape. Don't join the crowd. Don't join the crowd. Don't join the crowd. I'll take one short one and I'm done. Second Chronicles 12, verse 5 to 7. Second Chronicles 12, verse 5 to 7. That's only that's all I can take today before we pray. Second Chronicles 12, verse 5 to 7. Chronicles, not Corinthians. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It says the <laughs> I want to let's be on our feet. 